All right, so I'm going to start by uh, doing first the lymphatic system. This is a small little um, review. It's just a micro learning session with all the topics that um, incl are inclusive within the lymphatic system. In other words, the key highlights and terms and functions and just an overall understanding that will get you through um, this chapter. I have the source work. Um, I don't take credit for this. This comes from um, a website that um, is for teachers and students. And at the end of this document, you can access it. Um, and then I'll probably stop this recording and do another Zoom and upload to do the immune system, even though the two are discussed together. I just feel that it would be too long um, of a session. So let's get started. The lymphatic system, the study guide um, that I have um, procured for you is based on the idea that the lymphatic system is strictly for a number of things that we're gonna go over. The main function is that it is sort of like the circulatory system, but it is not. Um, it is interrelated with the uh, circulatory system as well as the immune system. So the lymphatic system is basically going to pick up excess fluid from the tissue. Um, and so how does fluid get to the tissue? Well, it's via the vascular system, right? So the blood pumps the heart, oxygenated blood from the left side of the heart to the aorta through all those arteries and smaller arteries and arterioles, and then eventually capillaries and capillaries are exchange vessels. And then so the nutrients and oxygen are picked up by the tissue cells and the cells of the tissue is going to drop off via gas diffusion. So via diffusion, we're picking up oxygen um, into the cell and the cell dumps the CO2 into the uh, venous circulation because it's getting picked up by the capillary. Same thing, we're exchanging great nutrients from the fact that you uh, had some ingestion of, of food that offered uh, plenty of proteins, amino acids, right? And then all of that gets absorbed in the GI system and then all of that eventually gets to the cells. So think of it that way, that um, the tissue is going to build up toxins and metabolites, CO2 and other toxins. And so the bottom line is, yes, the, the blood can pick that up and take it back to the heart via the venous system, but excess fluid and toxins, that's the job of the lymphatic system, okay? So once there's um, exchange of O2 for CO2 and CO2 is carbon dioxide picked up into the um, venules and then veins and then the larger veins and eventually uh, inferior vena cava to the right side of the heart, there is also a service road. So the main highway is the venous system, right? The arterial and venous system, all right? The arteries take the oxygenated blood from the left side of the heart and bring oxygenated blood to all the tissue and cells, right? And not just that, but nutrients. <clears throat> and then the veins bring deoxygenated blood, CO2. Uh, blood levels are high in CO2, so that's deoxygenated blood plus waste products all coming back Right. And of course, your kidney filtering it, but all that deoxygenated blood is coming back to the right side of the heart. Now, what about the excess fluid? Like I said, toxins and excess fluid, that's the job of your lymphatic system. It is the um, service road versus the highway. OK, so the lymphatic system is part of the circulatory system, but it also is part of the immune system. Why? Because the immune system is going to uh dedicate its its cells the white blood cells and there are many there's uh, never let monkeys eat bananas so neutrophils monocytes never let lymphocytes so neutrophils lymphocytes monocytes never let monkeys eat eosinophils bananas basophils for the purposes of simplicity when it comes to the lymphatic system we're going to be talking about the b and the t lymphocytes so the lymphatic system is going to house these lymphocytes, all right? The T cells mature in the thymus gland, which is um, part of that lymphatic system because the lymph vessels will connect with the lymph nodes and the um, 
like I said, the thymus gland, the spleen, these are all ancillary lymphatic tissue structures that are related and connecting with the highway system, the lymphatic circulatory system, which is the lymph vessels carrying the lymph. All right, so let's talk about what is lymph. Lymph is plasma. Plasma is the part of the blood that is not the formed blood cells, right? Not the white blood cells, not the red blood cells, not the platelets, it's everything else, the liquid portion. And in that liquid portion, you have um, plasma proteins and you have nutrients, you have gases in the blood, that's plasma, okay? Now, that plasma is also going to go all right, and be part of the, uh, the lymphatic system in the lymph, okay? So lymph is consistent of, consisting of the plasma fluid. So the tissues of the body are flushed with the blood, all right? So the tissue of the body are flushed with blood by this circulatory system. And the tissues process the nutrients and the gases, all right? Pick it up. And so it results in a fluid called lymph. And then any excess of that fluid is going to be drained from the tissue in that interstitial space and then finally be picked up by the lymphatic circulation, the lymph vessels. So the function of the lymph is to clear the, the toxins and maintain fluid homeostasis. The lymphatic system helps with fluid homeostasis. Um, it basically is the blood that is drained into the circulatory system, um, and it is not completely reabsorbed back into the system, but instead remains as excess fluid in the interstitial space between the tissue. And so this excess fluid is not blood plasma, but it is reduced in its composition and will consist of the toxins and will be uh, secreted by these tissues. And so that excess uh, toxic, toxic um, type of uh, fluid um, that's released by the tissue is called lymph, okay? And you'll find some of that in the interstitial spaces between the tissue. Long story short is that the lymph is then gonna be picked up by the lymphatic system and it travels in the lymphatic vessels, drained eventually into the circulatory system, back into that venous system, into that right side of the heart eventually, okay? So thereby we maintain fluid volume. So basically carrying out um, all the toxins of the tissues, including um, pathogens. So bacteria, viruses, all right? They will be filtered um, into the lymph uh, vessels and they travel but then think about the soldiers. The soldiers are the B cells and the T cells. So the T cells are found in the thymus gland, the B cells and the T's are traveling. And you'll see some of them in temporary tent cities. <laughs> I, I hate to make that analogy, but there's nodes and they move around, but then they stay in those nodes and wait for the pathogens so that they can be mobilized. And then again, they travel and kill. All right, so uh, pathogens must be filtered into the lymph nodes and then they're killed by the lymphatic cells, the lymphocytes, okay? The lymph blood flows through the lymph vessels to the lymph nodes and then throughout the rest of the body. And so these lymph nodes will have the lymphocytes and the lymphocytes will immediately recognize, oh, you shouldn't be here. You are a pathogen, kill. All right, now what else does, does the lymphatic system do? It absorbs uh, precious fats and fat-soluble nutrients like A, D, E, and K via the small intestine. We have these finger-like projections with lacteals, which are going to um, have the purpose of absorption uh, into the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system can get infected because of the lymph, um, and, and this, is, this is mainly because of excess cells, such as the B cells accumulating um, and, and, and also fighting off um, various um, uh, pathogens leading to uh, dead pathogens and debris. And so that causes a blockage and that blockage causes lymphedema. All right, so infections, cancer, so cancer cells also mount a huge immune response, can cause the same sort of blockage and lymphedema. So infections, cancer, and other diseases. 
Now, the players in terms of who houses these white blood cells, the lymphocytes, the Bs and the Ts, the thymus gland has houses the T cells where they mature. Of course, the Bs and the Ts are stem cells that grow in the bone marrow, okay? The red bone marrow of bone, and then they differentiate into the variety of mature white blood cells, which was <coughs> neutrophils, never, let lymphocytes, remember there's Bs and Ts, Monkeys, monocytes, eat eosinophils, bananas, basophils. All right. And I'm going to go over that in our next lesson. So those are the different types of um, structures that house the white blood cells, the Bs and the Ts. So to conclude, the lymphatic system is an important part of the body organ system. It helps in keeping the body fit and healthy by cleaning up toxins. Um, it will be always underrated because, um, for one thing, it's, it's not something that is looked upon as important as the cardiovascular system, which keeps you alive, but big, but if toxins accumulate then, and homeostasis is lost, and now all of a sudden the lymphatic system says, see, I am important. All right. So it serves as an indicator uh, for infection when lymph nodes are swollen and there's blockages in the lymph vessels, we know that something really um, is, is, is not uh, normal and we need to further investigate and work up for infection or even cancer if there is symptoms for that. All right, so FAQs. And again, I don't take credit for this um, particular document. Uh, at the bottom of this document, you can go to the website um, and, and check it out. So what is the lymphatic system and its function? The lymphatic system is part of the immune system as well as the circulatory system. Why? Because any excess fluid from the circulatory system is dumped into the lymphatic system. And then that lymphatic system is going to eventually dump the, the lymph uh, back into the blood circulatory system uh, into the right side of the heart. It collects uh, waste products from the tissue and brings it and returns it back to the circulation. It also has debris and foreign objects. And as we mentioned, uh, it kills pathogens because we have white blood cells such as B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes circulating in the lymph and in those vessels and housed in some of these lymph nodes. And of course, the the um, thymus gland where, where the T cells resides. And so when there is an infection, um, it will obviously mount an immune response. So what are the three main functions of the lymphatic system? Uh, maintaining homeostasis by uh, balancing the fluid between the blood and the tissue, um, participating in flushing out bacteria and debris away from the tissue site to lymph nodes and lymph nodes will remove facilitates absorption of fat and fat soluble nutrients such as a, vitamin A, D, E, and K. Now, uh, some good questions that uh, we need to understand um, because we all have a lymphatic system, we need to know how to maintain it. Preventive medicine is super important and often, again, um, not the main focus in medicine. We just try to fix people once they're broken, but how do we prevent the breakage process, right? How do we prevent people from getting ill and maintaining homeostasis, including the lymphatic system so that you have a healthy immune system because it's related to that and healthy circulation because it's related to that. So um, you want to have that lymph continuously flowing, not getting lymphedema or any kind of blockages. So you want to do a massage. A lymphatic massage is extremely helpful. Diets that cleanse the lymphatic system, ginger, lemon, citrus fruits, garlic, water, lots of water, uh, and plenty of good exercise help keeps the lymphatic system clean. Um, Low intensity exercises, walking and running, of course, on grass, not concrete, so you don't hurt your joints, swimming, bike riding, and of course, yoga to help uh, circulate the lymphatic system. All right. What are five facts about the lymphatic system? Here we go. The lymph is fluid from plasma. One. Two, the lymph vessels are different from blood vessels. Three, lymph nodes are there to fight and filter. So they filter the pathogen and then fight the infection. 
lymphatic system is unilateral. And finally, um, the health of the lymphatic system is also equally important to other organ systems, even though often it is overlooked. So what disease affects the lymphatic system? Lymphedema is common, is the most common um, lymphatic system abnormality, and it's due to accumulation of lymph. And that is A, due to infection, B, some kind of blockage, and it could be unilateral congenital uh, blockage uh, in one leg, um, or it could be bilateral. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, cancer, because we mount a huge response that causes a blockage, which then causes lymphatic uh, lymphedema. <laughs> now, what organs are part of the lymphatic system? Lymph, which is the fluid itself, which is made of plasma, lymph vessels, lymph nodes, all are part of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is important because it is not a closed loop and it is like the circulatory system, which will help drain excess fluid from the tissue. And finally, I'm gonna end with why do doctors check for swollen lymph nodes? Swollen lymph nodes indicate the presence of infection in the body that is being acted upon by the body's defense mechanisms through lymphocytic activity, which is the B cells releasing antibodies and the T cells directly killing the pathogen. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and learned something really amazing about the lymphatic system. This is the website with this exact study guide and different sources uh, right in here. And I encourage you to make your own study guides. It's the best way to remember the highlights after you read a chapter or PowerPoint or watch lots of videos, take your notes, put them on index cards, and then even make like a PDF file and, and just you can study the highlights, all right? So I hope this video was helpful to you. I'm gonna do another video now on immune system and you're all set for week five. Sorry, it's Friday, but it's just, it's almost impossible with discussion boards. I had finals with other courses. I had other courses that are starting Monday. So it was a hot mess. So at least I have it before you take the assessments on Sundays, as you know, which is always the deadline. All right. Have a great weekend, y'all. Bye.